Now, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through why you may want to choose the Asus ZenBook Pro 16X OLED versus the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus series laptops. Now, this is laptops like the Asus Zephyrus G15, the G14, and the M16. Now, these are all great laptops. They're specifically gaming laptops versus the more notable creator-focused ZenBook Pro 16X. This is a new design. The keyboard slightly elevates off of the deck you have the dial, a glass vibration click trackpad, and of course a OLED 16 by 10 aspect ratio 16 inch screen. Now the closest to this would be the M16. That would be a mini LED 16 inch screen, a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Now before us is actually the G15 sharing almost all of the same design elements except for the screen. And of course, this is a Ryzen laptop compared to the M16 being an Intel laptop. Now, this is the only one I had available for me with me in the studio, but I thought it was close enough and you guys give me enough mercy that this would be a comparable. I do have all of the benchmarks ready with the M16 in them, so you can see the performance differences between all of the laptops, so we won't have an issue there. Now, what I wanna point out right off the bat is simply the weight and thickness, as well as maybe some of the assembly. Now, as I lift each of these laptops up, the Zephyrus is actually slightly lighter than the Pro 16X. Now, it is about the same thickness as you saw on the screen. So they both have about the same thickness, but it's just a little bit lighter with the magnesium alloy chassis versus the all aluminum chassis on the ZenBook. Now the build on the ZenBook is much more minimal. It doesn't have as much flair with that gaming laptop that the Zephyrus has. You can see those very simple edges, not a lot of fancy extra little shapes and plastic embellishments. Whereas we pull up the Zephyrus, you can see it has the embellishments here on the back, some curviness here in the chassis of the screen. And then of course, as you get towards the side, we have the side vents where we do not have any side vents on the ZenBook. However, because we're running Intel, the ZenBook actually runs a little bit cooler than this Ryzen laptop, as well as a little bit cooler than the M16, which has Intel as well. So you actually have a slightly cooler laptop, even though you have less ventilation than you do on this more gaming focused laptop. Now, as you open the screen on the Zephyrus, you actually have a little bit ergo lift going on here. What that does is it pulls the keyboard deck off of the desk a little bit, allows for air to get up and under and allows it to ventilate a little bit better. You do not have ergo lift on the ZenBook, but you do have the keyboard that lifts off of the deck. And below the keyboard is actually the two fans. So you have all that air channeling through beneath the keyboard. It also keeps the keyboard nice and cool. So you don't get that hot keyboard feeling that's common on a lot of gaming laptops. Now, both of the keyboards are very enjoyable to use. However, the biggest difference is going to be in the fact that you're not gonna have all of your volume buttons and mute mic up here in this separate key cluster. They're gonna be a light along here with the function buttons. And then you also get some extra keys down the side here. And it's gonna have the home button, page up, page down, and the end button. You have the key switches here for the arrows as well as on the Zephyrus G15. And you have the full size shift key. So as far as the keyboards, they are very similar. Really the biggest difference is that the keyboard on the ZenBook elevates towards you where the Zephyrus does not. And to be totally honest, I've been using this for about a week or two and it has become so comfortable that the keyboard slightly leans towards me that it feels weird that the keyboard is flat on the Zephyrus. So just off of a little note, does the elevated keyboard make a difference? I've already noticed and I didn't even mean for it to, it just it does. It feels much more natural that the keyboard kind of lifts towards you. Now the biggest difference in the keyboard decks is of course going to be in the glass vibration click trackpad and the glass dial with the manual click button in the center. Now that vibration click on the trackpad feels very authentic. What I like about this glass trackpad is it has a little bit of give, a little bit of flex in it. So when you click it, it does feel like it's actually going down, though it isn't. It is simply a vibration that the software is creating. Whereas on the Zephyrus G15, it is a manual click that is taking place. Now they both feel great, but I honestly feel that the ZenBook is just has that slight edge of refined feeling in it and it just it's phenomenal it's such a nice feeling trackpad and it is quite a bit bigger than the g15 as you can see putting them side to side i've done a lot of videos on the studio book dial so if you're curious about my feelings and thoughts on the dial as a productivity booster i'll go ahead and link up a video for you on that so you can see my full thoughts on it 
It is a fantastic addition to a laptop. It really makes it a full creator focused laptop, it saves you a lot of time, and it really is a workflow booster. It's not just a gimmick. By far, it's fantastic. Now, I'm gonna give you a little sample of the webcam so you can see what each of those look like, and then we're gonna have a quick sample of the audio so you can hear what the speakers sound like with a little audio music coming out of those. This is the webcam on the Asus Zephyrus G15 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on the Asus ZenBook Pro 16X OLED and a little sample of the audio for you. Really nice looking webcam, clear. It is a 720p, but it does have a clean image coming out of it. Now the port selection between these two laptops is actually quite a bit different. If you look at the ZenBook here on the right side, you can see that it has two USB type C's, USB type A, and your power adapter. Whereas on the Zephyrus, we have our headphone jack, two USB type C's, a USB type A, a ethernet port, and HDMI as well as your power adapter. Flip it over and you have simply a micro SD card slot and a USB type A. Whereas on the ZenBook, we have the much needed and enjoyable SD card slot. Creators as myself are often definitely relying on that for quick transfers, a headphone jack and an HDMI. So you have a simplistic selection of ports that are all very utilitarian on the ZenBook. And then you have more of a plethora but you're missing the SD card slot. You get that micro one, it just isn't the same, but you get a lot of different port selection on the Zephyrus. I know for gamers, having fast internet with that network port is definitely helpful for creators and isn't as necessary. So I'd love to see that we have more slim selection of ports in the SD card slot on the laptop. Now, battery life is one area that the Asus Zephyrus G14 and G15 definitely went out. They're equipped with Ryzen processors. Now, I'm gonna pull the battery life up on the screen for the G15. As you can see, it's just crazy how well this laptop handles efficiency when on simply eco mode or previously known as iGPU mode. Basically, that means that you turn off the GPU and you're only accessing the CPU's performance, which gives you much better battery life. Now, I'm gonna pull up the ZenBook's battery life, and as you can see, it just isn't even a competition. It doesn't have iGPU mode or eco mode. It does have whisper mode, but that's just not the same. It's not the same feature. And it's an Intel processor, which have been known to be less than efficient. So as far as battery life is concerned, that's gonna be my biggest disappointment with the Asus ZenBook. This to me would be the perfect creator laptop. And I use that word very, very tightly because I don't wanna just say that to, to produce hype. This laptop really has everything going for it except for the battery life. So if you're gonna get this laptop, make sure you bring the charger along with you. I really wish that maybe they had an option for the Ryzen 9 6900HS processor in this laptop so you could choose maybe some cool quiet thermals from Intel or you could choose more efficiency and better battery life from Ryzen. But that's not the case this year. Maybe next year we'll have an option like that. Now the upgrade path is something that also takes a slight advantage from the Zephyrus. The Zephyrus, you can actually swap one of the RAM sticks inside of the laptop, where you cannot do that with the ZenBook. So what you order the ZenBook with is what it's coming with as far as the RAM is concerned. So you can easily upgrade the Zephyrus to 40 gigs of RAM with a 32 gig stick and the eight gig solder to the motherboard that exists. Whereas this, it's gonna be stuck however you purchase it. Now, without further ado, let's get into the performance benchmark so we can see the big differences between these two models. Now, keep in mind that I have a few different models I'm reviewing. The two that you see before me here have RTX 3060 GPUs. The G15 comes with the Ryzen 9 6900HS, and the ZenBook comes with the i7-12700H. Now, the M16 comes with the i9-12900H and the RTX 3070 Ti. Now, they all have 16 gigs of RAM, so that's where there's some similarities. But you're gonna get into the benchmarks here, and you're gonna see which one works for you. Now, there's a variety of prices as well, and if you wanna check the live pricing, I'll put the links in the description below. If you do make a purchase of those links, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But starting off with the ZenBook, it's about $2,600, give or take, at the recording of this video. The G15, around the $1,800 price point, and then the M16 can be upwards of $2,100 
$100. So there's quite a bit of price option there for you. Now looking at the simulated benchmarks in Geekbench single core and multi-core, you can see that the M16 is sitting at the top of the list for single core performance with that i9 processor. And then down the list, you'll see the ZenBook and the G15. Now as you move into multi-core performance, that ZenBook actually picks up, which to me was quite surprising as Ryzen has been historically known to be the best multitasking CPU. But you see the ZenBook, then the M16, and then down the list, the G15. Now, as we move into Cinebench R20, you can see that the M16 steps it back up a bit with the culmination of the i9 and the RTX 3070 Ti. And then following down the list, we have the ZenBook Pro 16X, and then we have the G15. Now, moving on to Geekbench single core and multi core, we see a similar story with the benchmarks kind of jumping around a little bit between each of the laptops, but I don't want to spend too much time here. Simulated benchmarks are great, but they don't give me the full story. So let's go ahead and jump into Blender Classroom. And that's where you see that the G15 and the M16 really stand out. They get a better performance than the Asus ZenBook Pro 16X. For whatever reason, because I mean, it has an i7 12700H, it has an RTX 3060. I just think there's a little bit of thermal throttling going on here with this system. Now, I do think that maybe upgrading this laptop to an RTX 3070, which to my uh, knowledge is not possible at the moment, but I really wish they would have given us maybe just an upgradable GPU path rather than the upgradable processor path. So right now you can get this in an i7 or an i9, but only an RTX 3060, where I wish they would have given us only an i7 and then maybe chose between the RTX 3060 or the 3070. So these more graphical performance needy programs could have the option to get more if necessary. Moving on to Autodesk 3ds Max and Autodesk Maya, it's the same story. The M16 and the G15 are leading the pack, following up by the ZenBook Pro 16X. And then as we move on to PTC Creo and SolidWorks, we see the same story. So if you want a laptop with a lot more punch in the 3D modeling, motion design, uh, or blender area, I would definitely go with the M16 or the G15. However, we're gonna see in Photoshop that this laptop is very capable of Photoshop and will give you no issues at all. Because as long as you're above an 800, you have more than enough power inside of Photoshop. Now keep in mind as you're seeing on the list, the M16 and the G15, M16 in the thousands, G15 in the 900s look a lot better on the charts. But believe me, the mid 800s is plenty of power for Photoshop. And don't forget about the dial because it's gonna boost your workflow, which would actually be even better than just having more performance on your laptop. So overall, punch for punch, I would lean you towards this laptop with the more efficiency focused features. But I will say if raw performance is what you're looking for, then as we shift back into After Effects, you can see that the M16 and the G15 have a benefit there for you. Now, as we go on to video editing, you will have no issues with any of these laptops. They will all perform very well with 4K and 6K B-RAW playback, and even red 6K footage. So all the laptops are very well optimized for video editing. Looking at the 4K export times, you can see on the list here that they're all falling in that very good medium range of about the two and a half to three minute export time. That's a nine minute 4K clip exported out of Premiere Pro. As you move on to 6K, however, you're gonna see a slight advantage with the G15 and the M16, getting about a 14 minute export and about a 15 minute export. The ZenBook Pro 16X comes in about 1735, so a little bit slower, but nothing crazy. Not, it's not like a 30 minute export compared to a 15. It's not double, it's about 10 to 15% slower. And in looking at DaVinci Resolve, you don't have many concerns there as well. Whether you're using DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro, all three of these laptops will handle it well. Now, punch for punch, if it were me, I feel like this laptop was created for me. The ZenBook Pro 16X has everything I've always wanted. A large 16 by 10 aspect ratio OLED screen for really nice darks, really bright colors and great contrast. It has the dial, which is no longer a manual rotating dial, but a glass trackpad material with a manual center click button. It has a glass vibration click trackpad, which I'm a huge fan of. And then of course, the slightly elevated keyboard that comes off of the deck giving better ventilation. This all comes in in a nice thin and light package. You really can't beat it. And so for me, this would be a great fit for me because I don't do any 3D modeling and I don't do a lot of After Effects work. However, if you're somebody who does do a lot of 3D modeling, does do 
a lot of After Effects work, and you're also somebody who games, then the Zephyrus lineup would be a great pick for you. I just think as a creator who doesn't game, who doesn't need any of that sort of feature, who doesn't need any of that specific performance, the Zen book is just my dream come true. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't want to miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.